Live from Philadelphia, I'm Adrian Manns at The Money Show. I've got the privilege of being here with uh, Robert Kelly, who is focused on a part of the market that's dear to my heart. It's uh, much more of the short-term trading than we've been talking about in the previous interviews. So I, of course, trade exclusively intraday. I use some, some technicals. I use a lot of support and resistance stuff in my trading. You use Elliott Wave, which has always fascinated me, and I think a lot of people think it's something akin to witchcraft. Maybe you can explain a little bit of how Elliott Wave works and what the waves predict. Yeah, the, you know, R and Elliott came up with this whole concept, and it's basically a comprehensive cataloging of wave patterns that you, when you come up with a wave count. And the wave count gives you a framework to give you kind of a probability estimate, a uh, target levels, mm -hmm. and where you're wrong. So that's the nice thing about Elliott Wave. We can sometimes identify you know, profitable trades that give us a projection multiple times what we have to risk. And we have good levels where we know if it goes through this level, you know, bail out of the position. Uh, so you know, Fibonacci is a great tool that we combine with Elliott Wave. I was going to ask. Um, yeah, like for example, the 786 retracement is a kind of a good when, you, when it's a bigger range, you don't, you're not talking with short-term two-minute chart, and you, you, know, you have a larger money at risk, uh, the 786 is a good stop level sometimes to not risk all the way to the prior high or low. 786 is, of course, the square root of 618. Right. And it seems about like 90% you know, of the time, if you go through that, you're going to keep going. So that's a level that I, I use to combine with, my, you know, with the wave count as well to uh, define the risk levels. So fibs, wave counts, do you do anything with like floor trader pivots or, or um, swing pivots or any? No, that's sort of different from Elliott Wave yeah. and I just pretty much strictly Elliott, but I have a lot of other indicators I look at um, that are sp specific to the stock market, which is one okay. of the nice things about it. You've got the VIX. Right. Uh, when the VIX is making a new, uh, the market's making a new high and the VIX isn't making a new low at the same time, that's a classic divergence that warns of a trend change. That's something right. I look at. You got related instruments like HYG and JNK, you know, the junk bond ETFs, where they're not confirming the stock market. A lot of times that's a precursor for a trend change. I look at put call ratios, which of course update throughout the day. CNN fear greed index, which updates throughout the day. Uh, and so there's a lot of sentiment tools you got. You got VIX, you got advanced decline line. I like to keep an eye on that every day. Um, and so when the Vance call line is not confirming a new high, for example, in the market, that's a sign that the move is running out of steam. Right. So you were primarily a, a futures trader, right? Are you, are you trading equities as well now? Or? Well, my focus is the indexes, primarily okay. the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, I look at the Russell a little bit, and some ETFs. To, you know, if there's a really clean wave count, we'll feature something along those lines. Okay, cool. So, and if people want to learn more about what you're doing or your thoughts on Elliott Wave and all, where, where can they find you? Yeah, ElliottWave.com is our website, and uh, we have publications for longer-term traders down to the short-term, almost day trader type type customer. So, a lot of information is available there. All right, Robert Kelly, thank you. Thank you. All right, so for the Money Show, I'm Adrian Manns, live from Philadelphia.